The increasingly vocal atheist movement. This past week, the Supreme Court heard arguments in a case brought by atheists who claim the Bush administration's Office of Faith-Based Initiatives violates the separation of church and state. This is just one example of the mounting assertiveness of atheists who are arguing loudly that religion is not only false, but also a threat to civilization. There is no God and you are not going to hell. Atheists and evangelicals facing off outside the Supreme Court. I don't say you're, you're wrong. You're saying it comes from God. I say it's your you're opinion. Wrong. The occasion, a lawsuit brought by the nation's largest atheist group, the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Leader Dan Barker is a former fundamentalist preacher. What are you preaching now? Separation of state and church and reason and kindness in place of superstition and, uh, and ideologies. But Barker and his wife, co-president Annie Laurie Gaylor, say the problem is bigger than the Bush administration and its faith-based initiatives. They see a world being torn apart by religious fundamentalists of all stripes. But religion is the source of an incredible amount of comfort for people. It's also something that has driven people to save lives and feed people. And it's a source of the greatest violence in the world. More people have been killed in the name of religion than for any other reason. The atheist argument seems to be resonating right now. There's an atheist internet recruiting campaign, atheist summer camps, and several best-selling books, including Letter to a Christian Nation by Sam Harris, who says religion poses a global threat. We have a world that has been shattered quite unnecessarily by competing religious beliefs. We have Christians against Muslims, against Jews. They're, they're making incompatible claims on real estate uh, in the Middle East. Um, uh, as though God were some kind of omniscient real estate broker and you know, doling out par parcels of land to his cho chosen flock. People are literally dying over ancient literature. They're essentially arguing that not only is religion wrong, not only is your faith wrong, but it's dangerous. I think I understand the argument. I understand that uh, people who claim certain religious beliefs have uh, done terrible things throughout history. I think the challenge is coming back and reclaiming the real principles of the faith so that we act uh, decently toward one another. A lot of these atheists attack what they call religious extremism. Couldn't you characterize their argument as extreme? We talk about Islamic fundamentalists, we talk about Christian fundamentalists. I happen to think there are also secular fundamentalists out there. And in some ways their tactics and their arguments are just, to me, is just as offensive as uh, religious fundamentalists. I was speaking to an evangelical minister, a leading evangelical minister yesterday, who described your movement as a firecracker going off in the forest. In other words, you're really not going to make much of a difference. But if it's a dry forest, it can cause a quite, a, quite a conflagration there, can it? Atheists who envision a world without religion may have to wait a little while. While polls show that the percentage of Americans who say they're not part of any organized religion has grown from 8 to 14 percent, only 2 percent of Americans identify themselves as either atheist or agnostic.